Okay, in this video, we're going to look at building a summarization system. And summarization is a challenge that has been around for a long time. There are lots of issues to do with this that people have faced in the past. One of the, the most obvious ones is that each person tends to summarize things differently. So often you'll find that one person wants a summary one way, someone else wants it a different way. And in the past, that's really meant that you had to either train separate models or find versions of models. And the data sets for doing fine tuning and stuff in the past were very limited too. So you had things like CNN news data set or this kind of thing where the summaries were basically based on articles. It's a very tight kind of niche. And if you had something that was a little bit out of domain, the models wouldn't do that well at all. So this changed a lot when the whole sort of instruct tuning started to happen. So that the sort of first ideas of training something for instruct tuning, and then obviously the RLHF tuning that has been done for the latest models like ChatGPT, et cetera. And it turns out that now to do summarization, we can really get good results just through prompting the model in the right way and passing in the context that we want to be summarized. So let's look at how to do this in LangChain. And I'll give you some tips about it as we go along. We'll look at different ways that you can do it in LangChain and some of the advantages and disadvantages of each of these. So you can see here, I've just brought in uh, the normal sort of stack, LangChain, OpenAI. We've got tick token as well, which is basically just for counting tokens that is going to be used in here. So first, just setting up a simple summarization chain. So here you can see we're going to be bringing in the normal sorts of things. We've got our prompt template. We've got a large language model chain. One of the new things we're bringing in is the text splitter. So how are we going to actually split up the text for this? And then we're also going to bring some different chains in for how we deal with, with text that is longer. And this raises a number of issues. In the past, one of the biggest challenges you had in, in summarization was that the models could only do 512 tokens. So you had to split everything up. Now, currently, as I'm recording this, the chat GPT model can go out to 4,096 tokens. There are rumors of new models coming out with 8,000 and 32,000 token spans. They're definitely going to change summarization in a big way. But at the moment, we've got better than we had in the past with 512, but we still can't put in perhaps a whole book or something like that into it. So we need some ways to be able to split up the text. And this is where the text splitter and the map reduce, and you'll see stuffing and you'll see refining are different sort of ways of splitting up documents. So the document that I'm using here is a very simple document that I found on online, quite famous how-to book, how to win friends and influence people. I've just taken the first chapter of that and stuck it in a text file. As far as I know, this was written close on a hundred years ago or something like that. So I think it's out of copyright for, for us to be able to use this. So you can see that what this does is it goes through and it splits it up. And actually we're ending up with four different texts that we'll be able to put into the model. This is the first thing is making our docs. And then if we look at the docs, we can see what the actual content is like. Uh, we go through and see, and I suggest when you first start this out, pick some content that you know, so you can get a sense of how good the summary is and which techniques make the summary better, which techniques don't help for that. So we've got this in. Now we're going to talk about is like, there are three different uh, ways to do the summarization and really that they're ways to combine these documents that we've split up. How do we summarize each, each sort of chunk of these documents and use them? So the first one I'm going to look at is MapReduce. So this is one of the more common ones, and these are just taken from the LangChain docs. I've put the link there that you can go through. I, the idea with MapReduce is that you've got, we've got our text split up into four chunks. What it would do then is it would do a summary for each chunk. So we would end up with four summaries, and then it would do a summary of the summaries to end up with a final summary. So you've got initial prompt and a summary for each chunk of data. Then you've got, you can use a different prompt or the same prompt to basically combine all these into one overall summary here. So the advantages of this is that this can scale to much larger documents and to multiple documents as well than some of the other ones I will show you. It also allows, because each of the calls is totally separate to each other, we can actually do those in parallel. 
So this allows you to do multiple calls at the same time summaries, but you will find that this can use up a lot of tokens quite quickly. The cons with this is that this is definitely a lot more calls to the language model. And then also when you're combining, you're often going to lose some kind of some information in there. Unfortunately, there's no simple answer for that because as you'll see later on, something like the stuff document, we, the challenge there is that we can't go with long text. So anyway, let's look at doing a MapReduce summarized chain. So here we're basically bringing in types of chains, the summarized chain, we're loading in this. I've also got text wrap just to print this out. And then basically I just set up a really simple chain. I'm trying to use the large language model. We're using a temperature set to zero to try and stop it from hallucinating. And we're just going to run this through and it will go through and it will end up with a nice paragraph of text that is our final summary here. So if we want to look at what the two prompts are, remember we've got the prompt summarizing each individual chunk, and then we've got the prompt for combining this. It turns out in this case that those prompts are the same, but we can just go through, we can look at what those prompts are and see them. So we can see that the prompt is nothing fancy here. We can write a concise summary of the following. We pass in the text. And then we've got write the concise summary and it will output our summary. And then we're just doing the same thing later on with a summary of summaries. So one of the things we can do is we can run, we can set this same thing up and run it as verbose equals true. So we can see the output and we can see actually what's going on. So when we look at this, let me just scroll up a bit. We can see that, okay, we've got the, our prompt, write a concise summary of, and then we've got this whole chapter was about why this book was written. And we can see that it's taking in all the text and it will then make a summary of that chunk. And then at the same time, it's going to be, if it's doing it in parallel, it will then do be doing the second chunk and it can do all these chunks in parallel for this. And then finally we get to the chunk of where we've got the summaries. So in this case, four of them, and we're combining them into a final summary. And this is where our summary is here. And you'll see that there are bits of this that will be clear in these summaries. So if you went through a look at it again, this is why I recommend you pick some text that you know quite well and try that. So this is the map reduce summary technique. The next one up is the, is stuffing. Stuffing is what it says. It's just trying to stuff it all into a single call to the large language model. So this makes sense if you've got a large language model with a big token span. So going for something like the 4096 is okay. Obviously the newer models with even wider token spans would be better. But if you're using something where you've only got 512 tokens available, this is probably not the one you want to use that much. So here we can basically take everything that we've got and we're going to basically run it through. So the pros of this are a single call and also when it's the model actually has access to all of the raw information at once, so it can use all the bits that it thinks are important. And that's key for, if we think about the map reduce thing, if we've got something that's slightly important in chunk three, and there's parts of it that are slightly important in chunk two, it might drop out that information on both of those chunks because individually it wasn't a large piece of information for chunk two or for chunk three, but combined, they would be useful for a summary of the whole thing. So that's one of the disadvantages of the map reduce. Here we can basically see how this goes. I thought we'd also look at doing some different kinds of summaries. So here we've written a prompt template and the prompt template is just going to be write a concise bullet point summary of the following, and then we're passing this in. So the idea here is now, rather than getting a paragraph summary out, we want to get factoids and bullet points out that we can use for this. So we just to do this. We basically make our prompt. We pass all this in to just create this. And then we pass the prompt template into when we define the, the chain. So we've, again, we've just got load summarized chain. The type is going to be stuff this time and we're passing in the bullet point template. And then we run this through and sure enough, you can see now. We've got bullet points of each of the key things. This is, allows us to do a different kind of thing. Now we could have done that with MapReduce as well. It's not like stuff is the only one for doing that. If we come and look here, we can do the, the our own prompt with the MapReduce one. So the difference is that if you remember the MapReduce has got two sets of prompts, right? One for doing the individual chunks and one for doing the combining chunk. And that's what you've got here. So. If you just passed in prompt equals bullet point prompt, it, you'll get an error. So you need to pass in for when you're doing the map reduce, you need to have, pass in the map prompt 
and the combine prompt. And if you've already initialized this, you can actually just go through and overwrite them. So that's just showing you how you could go through and overwrite them. We then would get something back. You see in the map reduce, we're getting more bullet points back. So it's obviously decided that there are certain things and we're getting different bullet points back. Yet again, this is why I say, try it out with some text so you get a sense of what the summary is doing. And then we can basically just put that all together. Okay, one of the things I wanted to show you too was that if we go through on this one, I'm just going to run this one so that we can look at something in a second. Okay, here we're just passing in our prompt template. We're just setting it up just like before. The big difference we're going to be doing here is we're going to do return intermediate steps equals true. So what is that about? You'll see that now when I'm taking the output, I'm not just taking the whole output. I've now got a dictionary where I can access different types of outputs. So I can get here and I'm only returning the outputs here for this. I can take the output text, which is the final text that we've got here, but I can also take the intermediate steps. So if you look at this one, so this is like our final output text. But this one here is the summary of just the first chunk. And then if I want to see the summary of just the second chunk, I can come in and look at that and I can see, okay, so summary of the third chunk, no problem. We can look at that. So the advantage with this one is if you wanted to reuse these, this could be useful. And ideally you want to keep some of this data so that eventually you can use this data for fine tuning. If you're putting this into production. You'd want to use a way of storing this data to be able to do your own RLHF in the future for this kind of thing. So the intermediate steps is a key thing for this. The third type of, of summarization is the idea of this refined summarization. So this is, we're not passing in everything at once. We're passing in multiple chunks, but we're not doing it in the same way of the map reduce one. What we're doing here is where we're passing in the first chunk with an initial prompt, right? So the first chunk just passes is what we pass into the first step. And then we take the output of that and we pass that in. So that's the summary of the first chunk. We pass that in with the input of the second chunk. So by doing that, we're now adding to the summary of the first chunk. So it's like we go step one, summarize the first chunk. Step two, summarize chunk two plus the summary from chunk one at the same time. And then step three, summarize the summary from the output of chunk two, which is actually a summary of chunk two and chunk one with the input of chunk three. So you're refining this over time as you go through this. This has advantages so that you can pull more relevant context out. Challenge with this though, is it's very much a sequential thing. So you can't do these calls independently. So if you've got a long document, this can be very slow. It could be quite slow to go through and do this, but you might find that for your particular task, it gets better results. So you can see here that we've gone through, it's generated a longer summary in there. You can go through and try it out. Just like with before, we can basically put in our own prompt and we can play around with the prompt, but you'll see that the way the prompt is done is slightly different. So the first prompt is similar to what we had before, right? It's just for that chunk of information, but the refine template is where it's going to basically be telling your job is to produce a final summary. We have provided an existing summary up to a certain point, and that's passing in where it was from the previous chunk. And then we have the opportunity to refine the existing summary only if needed with some more context below. And then we're passing in the next chunk there. So by going through that, we're building this up over time. We can do the whole immediate steps thing as well. And you can see the, the first output, and then you could go through and see what was the summary like at each chunk. So this can be useful for just testing. Am I losing? If I've got 30 chunks, when it gets to chunk 25, has it totally forgotten? What was it? Chunk one you'd, and this would allow you to go through and see where, what happens to the summary over time for this thing. So these sort of give you the three basics of getting started with a summarization system. In the next video, we will look at going through and adding in a checker to this so that you can actually have the language model check the output of some facts against the input text to see like a reverse thing to make sure that it hasn't hallucinated. And that can be really useful for improving the quality of the summaries as well. 
So we'll look at that chain in the next video. As always, if you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. If you found this useful, please click like and subscribe. And if you've got anything that you would like me to cover in some of the videos, please also let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching. I'll talk to you in the next video.